Field level encryption, guys. This video is brought to you by MongoDB. MongoDB is creating field level encryption to protect customers' data on the client. A lot of times we're passing down client side data, like what is your email, what is your social, all that stuff is being stored in client side data. With field level encryption, MongoDB now allows you to encrypt that data client side. So if you guys are looking to protect your customer's information on the client, make sure you guys check out field level encryption. Also, Mongo has a webinar on February 12th of this year, 2020 at 12 p.m. Eastern time. Hey guys, what up? Um, so you wanna know what's better than working all the time? Uh, not working all the time. And today is one of those days where I'm just kind of tired. I'm, I'm like, uh, I've been coding a lot lately and I, I think I'm just, I'm just a little bit tired, but I looked at a job post the other day. It was on Stack Overflow. And the job description, it was for a lot of money. It was like for like 140 to 180 or something like that. So they're looking for like a senior React guy or girl. And um, they wanted, they had this humongous description. I'll have to like share it if I can find the link again. But uh, in the description of the job, it was like, you prefer to, you know, eat pizza at home while coding versus going out. And like, it just listed all these different things that like, essentially somebody with absolutely no life whatsoever except for code uh, and that's who they're looking for they're looking for somebody that like is gonna you know be destined at some point to wake up and be like holy shit what did i do in my in my entire life so many of uh, us developers it seems like we got into this this gig because you know we saw all the success that people were having we saw these billion dollar companies spring up from what seemed like you know simple ideas and I think a lot of that motivates us, you know, we're motivated by money in this industry um, a great deal. I would say that I'm in that category as well because, I, you know, I, I tried to be a business owner before I became a programmer. So I would say that, you know, obviously there was some uh, money incentive there and I didn't have a whole lot of money when I first got started. And um, today's just one of those days where it's like, man, shit, you know, like, where am I going to be in like 10 years? Am I going to just, you know, call it quits and... Uh, start working at Starbucks maybe, you know, do YouTube on the side, work at, you know, work Starbucks. I, I don't think that, I, you know, that would make me happy, but at the same time, I look at some of these job descriptions and I'm like, man, I'm kind of stuck. You know, you're stuck as a senior dev. You're going to make about the same amount no matter where you go once you get up to a certain level. Um, when you're fresh out of school, you're new into this industry, you can, you have a lot of upward trajectory in your salary when you're uh, just getting started, but software development is very front-loaded in the salary field, which means that You're gonna make about the peak of what you're gonna make pretty damn quick You know when you compare that to being a doctor or a lawyer uh, Those people can start their own practice and they can start making a ton of money uh, And where they might be making as much as a software engineer when they first start out or the first you know five ten years that They're doing it You become a partner at a law firm. You're making millions of dollars in many cases um, granted, you're also working your ass off too, so it's a high stress, high burnout industry. Um, but that up, upward trajectory is always there. So for software engineers, we don't really have the same thing. We have the ability to, to start our own company, but in many cases, the company that you work for, that you need to work for to pay your bills and take care of your life and everything, they're not gonna be cool with you starting your own company and trying to make millions of dollars on the side. Um, if it's any sort of competing type of field, you're not gonna be able to do that. So you're pretty much either gonna go full in on a startup that you're gonna invest you know, your livelihood into and you're gonna work harder than you've ever worked in your entire life for the startup, or you're gonna continue to work for a company. And um, you know, when, you, when you continue to work for the company, which is what most of us do, you get up to that, that peak level where you can't really go any further. And eventually after you know, doing that five, 10 years or whatever, you start to see some pretty prevalent burnout in this industry, just people that just are not motivated uh, to learn the latest thing and things like that. And um, I think it's probably normal. It's one of the unfortunate things I think about this industry. It's, it's There's a lot of excitement, but for all those people that want to be the next Mark Zuckerberg uh, or the next billionaire who starts, you know, the, the, the next thing that all the news is talking about, it seems like we always think that that's, you know, something that's within, uh, you know, possibility and like, for 99% of us, you know, 99.9% .9 of all of us, we're not gonna have that sort of success. 
Uh, and I guess the point behind this video is that it seems like the older I get, the more I realize how, how ridiculously stupid some of these companies are and the type of people that they're looking for and how off-putting that is to me. And, um, and really, I'm fortunate that I have this YouTube thing that, that kind of makes money on the side. It's, um, it, it's a good hobby for me. I like talking to you guys and uh, sharing my, my thoughts and everything. Uh, it does have some stress, but nowhere near as much as a, a you know a regular job. That's why you see a lot of uh, YouTube programmers like they don't actually work full time. People will be like Chris, why don't you make more tutorials, stuff like that? I'd be like Brad Traversy and all this, and like, and I'm just thinking, you know, I, I have a full time job and I commute two hours a day, four days a week, and I get to work from home one day a week. Uh, but you know that that's a lot of time that's invested in that, so I don't have a whole lot of time for tutorials and things and. And when I do, I'm not trying to do the same old shit that I have to do all the time, you know? So even if it's like, oh, I could do a Java tutorial. Well, I'm not really interested in that. I've been doing C Sharp for 10 years. I don't really feel like picking up Java right now. Uh, especially to the point of trying to teach it to other people. But my whole point behind all this is I think you guys should really treasure uh, the period of time when you're first getting into this gig as a junior developer up to your senior level role. Um, so many of these jobs, they want the world of, of their associates, so they do these you know, stupid whiteboard coding exercises and all these other things that you have to jump through in order to get the job. And then they want this un unhealthy level, of, you know, they have this unhealthy level of expectation from you. And I think the way that we're going to push back on that is that um, the industry is constantly changing, it keeps growing. And for all the people that are worried about ageism, I think that I'm, I'm less concerned with that. There might be a point one day in my life where I voluntarily say you know what i don't want to be a senior dev anymore i'm just going to take some junior role somewhere some junior role that's like close to a beach or maybe in the mountains or somewhere quieter you know i'm in dc right now and it's a uh, constant churn and burn in dc man there's like uh, uh i really don't like the big city i mean i'm not a big city guy man i uh i've been around dc my entire life but working in dc proper is just like it's it's just a mess i feel like but um yeah, just you know, treasure that junior programming role because nobody really expects you to know a whole lot and you're gonna get a whole lot of help um, and your salary is gonna go way, way up and, and that's all gonna be exciting for a long time. And then for all you, you older developers that are in this, um, you know, save your money, right? Save your money, invest as much as you possibly can and don't put all your eggs in one basket. Now, does that mean that I feel like as I get older that I'm not going to have a job? I really don't think that that's the case. I think that, you know, if you work hard enough and if you're competent enough, you're going to find work no matter where it is. And maybe you choose that you don't want that $180,000 a year salary and you'd rather go for 90 as a junior dev somewhere. Uh, especially if you were wise, you saved your money, you invested properly, and uh, and you don't overspend. You know, you don't, you don't have a lifestyle that, that requires you to make that sort of money. So... That's another danger I think that we have as so software devs when we move into a senior role and you're making 120, 140,000 a year, you become very, you know, a lot of people will spend as much as they make, so they'll buy a big house, they'll, they'll get the BMW. Um, and I really think that, um, I, you know, I've made those same mistakes. I bought an MX-5 last year, that shit cost me a bunch. I, I just wasted a ton of money on that car, but um, 2020 for me is a, is a year of like trying to save and, and really, you know, see what this YouTube thing can do is, you know, with my income and try to um, just start putting my eggs in other baskets, so to speak, so that I always have a backup plan. Um, some days like today, I'm just tired and I'm like, ah, oh, you know, I look at that job description. I'm just like, you know, fuck that. Like, I don't want to work for any company like that. I mean, why don't they, you know, basically lower their salaries and hire two people, you know, two people where they don't expect you to work all your weekends and, ev and, and evenings. Um, you know, that would be the more healthy thing to do. And I think that that cream is going to rise to the top. You know, the companies that figure that out are going to be the ones that are able to retain, retain a lot of talent. And that brings up another point too. I am constantly inundated with, uh, recruiters on LinkedIn and other places reaching out to me and I don't have time to chat, man. Like they always want to chat, you know, it's like, you got a few minutes to chat. No, I don't have a few minutes to chat because I can guarantee you the job you're trying to place me in is not going to be able to pay me the kind of money I'm looking for. And if they can, um, they're probably going to expect the world of me, you know, the, the, at least all my time. And those are things that I'm just not willing to do. So if you find a good employer that you feel like you're comfortable with, I would 
Brett, I would caution that you try not to jump to the to the next highest paying job once you're a senior dev because we always think the grass is greener, but it's always just another shade of brown. So, uh, you know, just keep that in mind. And uh, for all you junior devs that are out there, man, enjoy your time because eventually you're going to get to a point where you can't really go too much further uh, unless you go into management or start your own business. But even then, that, that, that comes at a, at, a, at a high cost. So anyway, guys, not trying to be negative on this video. It's just uh, it is what it is and um, sort of just how I'm feeling today, you know. So uh, make sure you guys check out my sponsor. I appreciate that. And hopefully you guys can help me fulfill this dream. One day I can uh, maybe be a full-time YouTuber. But for all the people saying, why don't you make more tutorials, it's because I have to work every day.